Talmud Bavli Gemara Brachot, Chapter 6, Perik Shishi, Chapter 6, Daf Mem Bet, Page 40b. Aval Hecha Dechi Shaklat Le Le Peri Le Te Le Gaza Dehada Mapik, but where, when you pick the fruit, the branch does not endure to produce again? We don't recite upon it the blessing uh, one who creates the fruit of the tree, but rather who creates the fruit of the ground. Now on to the next part of the Mishnah. And on all of them, if he said uh, about everything, all kinds of food, Itmar, it was stated, Rav Huna Amar, Rav Huna says, Chutz min hapat or min hayayin, except for bread and wine. The Rabbi Yochanan Amar, but Rabbi Yochanan says, Afilu pat vayayin, even to bread and wine. Neymar ketana e, let us say, uh, this is an argument between the, ta- between the Tanaim. Recorded as follows. Ra'apatva Amar, if one saw bread and said, Kamana'a pat zo baruch hamakom shebara, how pleasing is this bread, blessed is the omnipresent who created it, yatsa, he has fulfilled the ble- his obligation. Ra'ate'ena the Amar, if he saw a fig and said, Kamana'ate'ena zo baruch hamakom shebara, how pleasing is this fig, blessed is the omnipresent who created it, Yatsa, he has fulfilled his obligation. Divrei Bert Rabbi Meir. These are the words of Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yossi Omer, Rabbi Yossi says, Kol HaMeshane Mimat Be'a Shetav'u Chachamim Bivrachot Whoever deviates from the formula prescribed by the sages for the blessings, Lo Yatsa Yedei Chavato has not fulfilled his obligation. Neymar Rav Huna Damak Rabbi Yossi Let's say that Rav Huna stated, in accordance with, uh, so Rav Huna stated, in accordance with Rabbi Yossi, meaning that uh, Rav Huna said, uh, Rav Huna's ruling was that shakol is not sufficient for bread and wine, and Rabbi Yossi, so Rabbi Yossi also said the same thing. The Rabbi Yochanan Dama Karabi Meir, and that Rabbi Yochanan stated in accordance with Rabbi Meir. That means that uh, Rabbi Yochanan said that uh, Shakol does suffice for bread and wine, and that was in accordance with Rabbi Meir, who rules that one fulfills his obligation even if he deviated from the blessing inst- instituted by the sages. Amalak Rav Huna, Rav Huna could say to you, Ana de Amri Afilo le Rabbi Meir, what I said, even with Rabbi Meir, Ad kan lo kama Rabbi Meir hatam ela hecha daka madkar shemeid defat. Thus far, Rabbi Meir has not said there more than, uh, more than where one mentions the name of bread in the blessing. Aval hecha de lo kama madkar shemeid defat. But where he does not mention the name of bread, I feel a Rabbi Meir mod even Rabbi Meir would agree that uh meaning Rabbi Meir would would agree that uh, he hasn't fulfilled the obligation because he didn't recite any say anything about bread. The Rabbi Yochanan Amalach Rabbi Yochanan could say to you, Anad da Amri I feel the Rabbi Yossi, what I said even with Rabbi Yossi, Ad Kan Lo Kama Rabbi Yossi Hatam Ela Mishum de Kama Bracha de Lo Takinu Rabbanan. Thus far, Rabbi Yossi has not said there more than, uh, more than, be, more than that, because he has said a blessing that the rabbis did not institute. But he says that everything came into being through his word, which the rabbis instituted. That is for other foods. I feel Rabbi Yossi, my dear, even Rabbi Yossi would agree. 
So even here, Rabbi Yossi would agree that he has fulfilled his obligation. Binyamin Raya Karach Rifta Amar. Binyamin the shepherd ate bread and said, Brich Mare de Hai Pita, blessed is the master of this bread. Amarav, Rav said, Yatsa, he has fulfilled. Uh, that is, that the fulfill the obligation of reciting Bekaramazon. Vamarav, but Rav said, Kol bracha she'en ba hazkarat Hashem eina bracha, and any blessing in which there is no mention of the name is not a blessing. That means uh, no mention of the name of God. Binyamin the shepherd said, "Blessed is the merciful one, the master of this, the master of this bread." But we require three blessings. That is, we require three blessings for Bekar Mazon. How could he fulfil his obligation? What is also a Rav's statement, he has fulfilled. Yatsa Yede Bracha Rishona, he fulfilled the first blessing of Birkar Amazon. My Kamashmalan, what is uh, the teaching? What is the teaching here? What do we learn from this? Af al Gav to Amra Bilishon Chol, even though one said uh, in a secular language, Meaning, uh, the first blessing of Bekar Mazon was said in a secular language, i.e., not in Hebrew. It is valid. Tanina, we have learned in the Mishnah. The Elonim are in Becholashon, and these may be said in any language. Parsha Sota, the chapter of Sota. Vidui Maaser, the confession of the tithes. Ukriyat Shema and the recitation of Shema, Utfila and prayer, or Shmon Esre, Uviokata Mazon and grace after meals. Itzrich, it was necessary, meaning it was necessary to repeat that, uh, uh, it was necessary to repeat the ruling that we can do um, Bekara Mazon in any language. Salka Datachamina, you might have thought to say, "Hane mile de amra bilishon chol kihechi te takinu rabanam bilishon kodesh." This ruling, where when one said it in a secular language, in the same way that the rabbis said it in the uh, in Hebrew, in the holy language, aval lo amra. Bilishon Chol Kihechi Tatakinu Rabanan Bilishon Kodesh. But if one didn't did not say it in a secular language, in the same way that the rabbis instituted it in the holy language, Aimalo, I would say that he has not fulfilled Kamash Malan and Rav, Rav informs us. Therefore, uh, uh, Rav, Rav informs us. So this means that uh, that the Aramaic arrangement used by Binyamin the shepherd is valid. Gufa, it's uh, this was said itself, or it's said in the, it's said in in this uh, in this previous statement. Amarav Rav said. Any blessing which there is no mention of the name is not a blessing. The Rabbi Yochanan Amar, Rabbi Yochanan says, Any blessing in which there is no mention of God's sovereignty, his malchut, this is not a valid blessing. Amar Abaye, Abaye said, It is reasonable in accordance with Rav. Detanya, for it was taught in a brisa, Lo avarti mi mitzotecha vechol shachachti. I have not transgressed any of your commandments, and I have not forgotten. 
Lo aval lo avarti milvarechecha. I have not transgressed from blessing you. Velo shachati milhazkir shimcha alav, and I have not forgotten to mention your name upon it. The ilu malchut lo katane, whereas it does not state malchut um, sovereignty. Whereas it does not state sovereignty, the Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yochanan tni velo shachati mil hazkir shimcha umalchutecha alav amend the Baraisa to read, and I have not forgotten to mention your name and your sovereignty uh, upon it. Mishnah. And on something that does not grow from the ground, one says, that everything came into being through his word. On vinegar and on novelot and on locusts, one says, that everything came into being through his word. Rabbi Yoda Omer, Rabbi Yoda says, Klala, any that is a type uh, of a curse, ein mavachin alav. We don't recite a blessing on it at all. What's an example? Uh, so, an example of a food that is a curse is uh, a vinegar, which is wine that has gone sour. Uh, novlos and locusts, which destroy crops. Hayu lefanav minin har, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, hayu If there was before him many species of food, Rabbi Yoda Omer, uh, Rabbi Yoda says, im yesh benehen min shiva. If there is among them one of the seven species, I love whomever he recites the blessing on it. The chachamim omrim, and the sages say, mevarech al eze mehen shiritze. He recites the blessing on whichever one of them he prefers. So the seven species are a land of wheat, barley, grapevines, figs, pomegranates, oil, olives, and date honey. Wheat, barley, grapevines, grapes, figs, pomegranates, olives, and dates. Gemara. Tanu Rabbanan, the rabbis taught in Abraisa. Al davashein gedolo min haaretz on something that does not grow from the ground, kegon basav behemot chayot veofot vedagim, such as the meat of domestic animals, wild animals, and fowl and fish. Omer, you say, shakol niye bidvaro. Everything came into being through his word. Al hachalav veal habetzim veal veal hagvina on milk and on eggs and on cheese. Omer shakol. One says. Uh, the same blessing, shakol. Al hapad sheifsha on bread that became mouldy, the alayan shehikrim, and on wine that has spoiled, the al hatavshil sheavad surato, and on cooked a cooked food that has spoiled, omer shakol. One says uh, the the bracha, the same bracha, shakol niye bidvaro. Al hamelach v'al hazamit on salt and on salt water v'al v'al kim kmehin u pitriot and on truffles and mushrooms omer shakol you say shakol lememra dik dich dich mehin u pitriot lav gedule karka ninhu is this to say that truffles and mushrooms are not things that grow from the ground? Vatanya, while we learned in a Baraisa, Hanoder Mepeirot Haaret, one who vows uh, from the fruits of the ground, meaning someone who says that he's not going to eat from the fruits of the ground, Asur Bepeirot Haaret Umutar Bich Bich Mehin Upitriot, 
is forbidden from the fruits of the ground, but is permitted from truffles and mushrooms. Vi'imama kol gedule karka alai, but if he said all that grows from the ground uh, for me, meaning anything that grows from the ground is forbidden for, uh, for me, asur af bichmehin upitriot, he is forbidden even from truffles and mushrooms. Amar abaye, mirba ravu ma'ara minke lo yanke ma'ara, they grow from the ground, but they do not draw nourishment from the ground, or they do not draw from the ground. The ha al dava she'en gidullo min ha'arit katane, but the Baraisa states on something that does not grow from the ground. Tni al dava she'en yonek min ha'arit. Read the Baraisa and the Mishnah on something that does not absorb from the ground. So this is saying that uh, you don't say... So the, the, um, so the ruling is that is not that it grows from the ground, but that it absorbs from the ground. Va'al ha-novelot, and on the novelot, my novelot, what a novelot, Rabbi Zera and Rabbi Ila, Rabbi Zera and Rabbi Ila, they both have a dispute about this. Kharama Bushlay Kamra, one says, dates, uh, Novlot are, are dates scorched by the sun. The <coughs> Kharama Tamre Dezika, and one says, they are dates that are wind blown. Tanan, we learned in a Mishnah, Rabbi Yoda Omer, Rabbi Yoda says, Kol Shehumin Klala, any that is a type of a curse, Ein mevachin alav. We do not recite a blessing on it. I'm just going to go back. There is a, a note here. There is considerable discussion as to whether the scorched and or windblown dates refer to dates to which this has occurred before they reach maturity. Um, back to the text. Kol shehu min, ha- min klala, any that is a type of a curse, ein mevachin alav, we do not recite a blessing on it. Bishlam alaman damar bushlay kamra, all is well according to the one who says that dates scorched by the sun. Hainu dekare le min klala, that is why Rabbi Yehuda calls it a type of a curse. El alaman damar tamre tzika, according to one who says uh, they are wind blown dates. My my min klala, what type of curse is this? Ashara this pertains to the other. So the, the Gemara answers Ashara that the um that the cursed foods are only pertaining to the vinegar and the locusts and not to Novelot. Ikadamre, there are those who say Bishlama Lamanda Mabushle Kamra <coughs> All is well according to the one who says that date scorched by the sun. Hainu de mivarchinan alaihu shakol. That is why we recite on them the blessing shakol, uh, as opposed to ha'eit. Ela laman de amad tamre de zika. But according to the one who says that that they are wind blown dates, shakol. Um, do you do do you do shakol? Bore priha et mi baile levaruche. The blessing, the one who creates the fruits of the tree, is what he should recite. Ela benovlot stama kule almali almalo plige de vushle kamraninhu, rather all agree, novelot, uh, unmodified, are dates scorched by the sun. Ki plige benovlo tamra. Where do they disagree? That is, where do Rabbi Zara and Rabbi Eli disagree? Uh, with date palm novelot. Ditnan. I'll just re- reread that last part. Ki plige benovlo tamra. Tamara. Where do they disagree with date palm novelot? 
Ditnan, we learned in a Mishnah, Hakalin Shebadamai, the lenient fruits with regard to Damai. Um, Damai. I'll just uh, read the footnote. Damai. With the passage of time, it became apparent to the sages that many Amei Ha'aret, ignorant people, were becoming less scrupulous in the separation of tithes. Although they continued to separate trauma carefully, some of them no longer separated the other tithes. As a result, anyone who purchased produce from an ignorant person could not be sure whether or not the produce was table. Such uncertain produce is called Damai, which uh, some explain is a contraction of Da, Mai, as in what is this? Since the Demai might be Tevel, the sages decreed that one may not eat it unless one first separates from it those tithes in question. The lenient fruits that the mission will list are all of poor quality and little value, which removes the ignorant person's incentive to cheat on the tithes. Accordingly, the sages were lenient with regard to these fruits and exempted them from the general decree of Demai, since it can be assumed that the ignorant person did indeed tithe them fully. Back in the Gemara, Ditnan, for we learned in a Mishnah, Hakalin Shabadamai, the lenient fruits with regard to Damai, Hashitin Vaharimin Veha Uzradin Benot Shuach Uvnot Shikma Vegufnin Venitbe Venovlot Tamara. The Shisin, the Rimin, the Uzradin, Benot Shuach, and Benot Shikma, and Gufnin, and Nitbe, and Date Pam Novelot. Shitin, what is Shitin? Amar Rabba Bar Barchana Amar Rabbi Yochanan Min Te'enim They are a type of fig. So Rabba Bar Barchana said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan They are a type of fig. Rimin Kande Rimin and Kande ak, Rimin Ak Kande uh, That is A lotus, a date-like fruit Ha Uzradin Tulshe, Uzradin Asorb apples. That's what Rashi says. Benot Shuach, what a Benot Shuach. Ama Rabba Bar Bar Khana, Ama Rabbi Yochanan, Rabba Bar Bar Khana said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. Te'ene Chivrata, they are white figs, meaning of poor quality. Benot Shikma, what a Benot Shikma. Ama Rabba Bar Bar Khana, Ama Rabbi Yochanan. <coughs> Rabbi Baba Khanna said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Duvle, they are sycamore figs. Gufnin shilhe gufne, gufnin are late season grapes, which uh, do not fully mature. Nitspe pircha, nitspe is a caperberry. Uh, novlot tamara, and what a date palm novelot. Rabbi Ila, Rabbi Zera, Rabbi Zera, and Rabbi Ila. Chadamar uh, Bushlei Kamra one says their dates scorched by the sun. The Chadamar Tamre Dzik and one says they are wind blown dates. Bishlama Leman Dama Bushlei Kamra all is well according to the one who says that dates scorched by the sun. Hainu Dakatane Hakalin Shebadamai that is why the Mishnah states the lenient fruits with regard to Damai. Sveikan Hud Defatur. It is only the questionable ones that are exempt. For example, date palm novelot brought uh, bought from an uh, from an ame haaret from an ignorant person. Havadan chayav, but but the definite ones are subject. Uh, that is, they're subject to tithing. Ela lamanda ma tamre tezika, but according to the one who says wind blown dates, vadan chayav. Are, are the definite ones subject? That meaning, are they subject to tithing? Hefkera ninhu, they are ownerless. Hachabamay askinan, here, with what are we dealing? She'asan goren, the acquirer made the wind blown date into a pile of finished produce. Meaning, sorry, she'asan, she'asa'an goren. Uh, they're made into a pile of finished produce. De'ama Rabbi Yitzchak, ama Rabbi Yochanan, Mishum Rabbi Eliezer, Ben Yaakov, Rabbi Yitzchak said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, 
uh, in the name of Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov, Haleket Vehashichacha Vehapea Sha'as'an Goren, the Leket, the Shich, the Shichacha, and the Pea, that the uh, that was made into a pile of finished produce uh, that is made by a poor man, hook lemaisa become fixed with regard to tithing. Uh, so, leket is gleanings, the one or two stalks that fall from the reaper's hand while he cuts the grain. The Torah, there's a Torah prohibition about him retrieving these, and they must be left for, them, from the, for the poor. The shichacha are forgotten sheaves, one or two sheaves that are accidentally left behind when gathering the sheaves from the field, like leket. The pe'a, the portion of the crop, generally the edge of the field, a, a landowner must leave unreaped, that's reserved for the poor. So leket, shichacha and pe'a are exempt from tithing because the Torah states um, regarding the first tithe, which is given to the levy, the levy will come for he has no share or inheritance with you and receive the tithe that is due him. We infer from this verse that producing which the levy does, not ha- does have a share uh, which a poor lev- levy is entitled to take are exempt from tithes. Ika de Amre, there are those who say, uh, we'll continue with that shortly, there are those who say the challenge was presented as follows. <laughs> 